That's what Jesus told the rich young ruler. He says, why do you call me good? There's only one who is good. And God is the only one that's good. He is our standard of what is good. So we can read in Psalms 14.1, it said, a fool says in his heart, there is no God. Agnostic. You're saying there is a God, but you don't know who he is. Psalms 53.1 says the same thing. There is no God. So agnostic, I'm not calling you a fool. You're starting to realize there is a God. So we know that common grace, does society dictate what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad? Now that brings us to the, the man called Epercus. He was a, a Greek philosopher. And he, he, his, his quotes are many right. And this is his quote. And in an the intelligent, here's what he says. Is God willing to, pre, to prevent evil but is not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he willing and able? Then he does not. Where does, where, then where does evil come from? Then why call him God? See, the question that Ippocrates is asking, well, why won't God deal with evil? You notice that's the question that we all ask. Well, why won't God deal with evil? Well, we we want to know, well, why didn't God stop the, the towers falling from nine, on 9-11? Why didn't he stop the tsunami from crashing and killing people? Why didn't he stop my uncle from dying of cancer? Why didn't, why didn't he save my parents' marriage? Why, why did she leave me? Why did he rape me? Why, what was God at? Why deal with evil? Before I answer that question, I want you to answer mine. God has dealt with evil. But the question is, how could a God in heaven that the Bible talks about is holy and righteous and good, who's holy and justice, whose very foundation, his throne is holy and righteous, and everything he does is just, how can a God like that allow you and me to exist? Who we blatantly keep blaspheming his name, we're profane and we dance across his face and provoke him to kill us as we rebel against him. You're thinking, Kevin, how how have I provoke God to to attack me. Atheist, agnostic, listen. This Bible we call the Christian Bible, it has something called sin. This is my third point. It's called conscience. We can read in Psalms 19.7 that the truth God desires in the inward parts that is written on each and every man a conscience. Con means with knowledge, science, conscience. You have a conscience, and on each conscience, God has written his laws, and you're thinking, Kevin, what are God's laws? I'm so glad you asked. As we look in the Christian Bible, you turn to Exodus chapter 20, we can go through God's laws quickly and easily. These are God's requirements to get to heaven. You're thinking, Kevin, why would God give me requirements to get to heaven? Well, if we believe in Genesis, we believe that God created man and woman in all of creation. We believe that God has a right to man as its creator. And we as his creation worship and do his requirements. So we can look at God's law starting with number one. Have no other gods but me alone. I don't know about you, agnostic. There's no difference between me and you that I have served other gods. Maybe agnostic, you've served other gods. Maybe you've even served yourself and said that you're God. Number two, that should not have any graven images. Graven images are things that are physical that we can touch that are tangible. These are things like houses, cars. These are things like spouses and children. This is things like money and career. Things that we've longed and chased after. That we pour our energy into. We've worshipped those things instead of God. I don't know about you, atheist and agnostic. I've done those things. Number three, that should not take the Lord's name in vain. That's saying, oh my God, or using his name as a filthy, dirty word. You notice we don't say Muhammad you. We only say Jesus Christ as a a filthy, dirty word. Because that name is the only name that's so despised. Jesus Christ is the only name. Number four, honor the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That means go to church. I don't know about you, but I've not done that. Number five, honor thy father and mother. I've not honored my parents always, all the time, my entire life. I disrespected them. I've talked back. Number six, thou shall not kill. You're thinking, Kevin, oh, that's easy. I've not killed anyone. Well, Jesus tells us in Matthew chapter 5 
that if you have murder or hate in your heart or unforgiveness or he even goes a step further and says, if you call someone a moron or an idiot, it's the same as murder. Oh man, atheists. I'm in the same boat as you. I, I've, I've, I've done those things. I've had, the, I've had a hateful heart. I've murdered people. And I've murdered your reputation. Thou shalt not kill. Number seven, thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, that's okay. I'm married or I'm single. It doesn't matter. No, no, no. Jesus tells us in the same chapter, Matthew chapter 5, if you look upon a woman or a man in lust in your heart, you've committed adultery. Wow. So you may say, in my mind, yeah, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 30, 13 tells us that all of creation is open to God like a map. It's just open and unfolded. He sees our hearts. He knows our things. He, he, you can't have them. He knows. So I'm just like you, atheist and agnostic. I, I, I've, I've lusted. I've blasphemed. I, 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 I've dishonored my parents. I'm just like you. Oh, man. Number eight, as we look at God's law, thou shalt not steal. It doesn't matter how long ago it was or what you stole or when you stole. Thou shalt not steal. It doesn't matter the price. It doesn't matter if it was a big thing or who, who owned it. Thou shalt not steal. I've done that, atheist. I've done that, agnostic. Oh, wow. Things aren't looking good for us. Number nine, thou shalt not lie. I don't know about you, but I, I, you, you lie to me once, I'll call you a liar. You only lie once, you're called a liar. doesn't matter how long ago or when it was or who you lied to, thou shalt not lie. I don't know about you, but I've lied. Ten, thou shalt not covet. I live in a society where coveting is, is the norm, where everyone covets. If you walk down Times Square, there's signs to make you covet. Thou shalt not covet. I don't know about you, but I've coveted. On Judgment Day, atheist and agnostic, when you're standing beside me and other Christians and people from the boneyard, and you're standing there and you're going to be judged on these requirements, none of us will get to heaven. You're thinking, Kevin, what's the deal with Christian religion? Why even be a Christian then? Well, I'm glad you asked, agnostic. I'm glad you asked, atheist. As we read in Job chapter 9, verse 2, Job asks the same question. How can a man be right before God? How can anyone get to heaven if God is that holy and we are not? The question is, how will you respond? How will you respond? Are you going to say, I don't believe what you're saying. I cut you off at the beginning when you talked about a creator. Keep listening. See, the issue with Christianity, it deals with sin. No other religion deals with sin. Only Christianity does. Only Jesus Christ, the one true God. We believe as Christians that Jesus is the only way to heaven. You're thinking, Kevin, what does that mean? If God was fair, and if God is righteous and holy, then no one can get to heaven, right? Because we all deserve hell. We can read in Ecclesiastes 7.20, Surely there is not a righteous man on earth who never sins. Genesis 5.6, Every intention of man's heart is evil continually. Genesis 8.21, The intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Proverbs 20, verse 9, Who can say, I made my heart pure? No one. So we can read in Romans that we are all going to stray. Our hearts are wicked. So standing before God, atheist, agnostic, what's the difference between me and you? What's the difference between me and the guy down the street? Nothing. We all need a Savior. So what does God do? He doesn't do what Buddha does. He doesn't call us to meditate. He doesn't do what Muhammad does. He doesn't tell us to get in an airplane and crash into a building to become a martyr to inherit eternal life. He doesn't tell us to earn our way to heaven. He doesn't tell us to get on a bicycle and go door to door to earn our way to heaven. He doesn't tell us to do that. What God of the Bible does is he sends Jesus, born of a virgin, who lived 33 years, never sinned once, never gave in to temptation, lived a holy and righteous life, walking around, healing the sick, praying for the dead, and they live, laying hands on the blind that they'll see. He, this Jesus, the Son of God, the one this whole Bible, the Christian Bible is about, came on a rescue mission from heaven to save the villains. That's me and you. See, 
For the Bible says, for the cost of sin is death. Hebrews 6.23. For the wages of sin is death. And God will pour out his wrath on sin. So God's dealing with sin now. But what about my sin? He puts it on Jesus in my place. It was my sin he put on Jesus. And your sin he put on Jesus. It should be you who dies for your sin. But he puts it on Jesus in our place. So atheist and agnostic, repent of your sins. That means the sins that you do. The, the Ten Commandments that we just went through. Those sins will keep you out of heaven for eternity. But you hold on to them. And you won't repent. It's not that you can't. You won't. Jesus is the only way to heaven. And now, God poured out his wrath on Jesus. And Jesus died on the cross on yours and my behalf. So on judgment day, I will trust in Jesus as my only way to heaven. See, in heaven, I have a bad heart. But I repent of my sins. So I have a good heart. Like it says in Ezekiel 36, 26, God would give me a new heart. But now I have a bad record. I have a bad record. All the past sins that I've done, they must be washed away. Any convict standing before a judge, judge, I've changed. I, I, I'm reformed. I'm good and I'm new. But that doesn't change the fact of his record. Buddhism doesn't deal with sin. Muslims can't deal with sin. Scientology can't deal with sin. Only Christianity deals with sin. Our sin, the bad things we did, the things that cause us to be rebellious before God, even if our heart were reformed, be reformed and changed, God wipes away our sins and regenerates us and makes us new. He blots out our transgressions and makes us children of God, and we are longing to be with Him. You're thinking, Kevin, what's the point of all this? What does it matter? It's to bring God glory. It's to take sinners like me and you and say, I trust in Jesus. He washes away sinners like it says in 1 Timothy 1.15. Jesus saves sinners. So repent of your sins and trust in Jesus. Repent of your sins and trust in Jesus.